Extreme heat are temperatures or humidity levels that are far above what we're used to for an area. So in Sacramento, for example, the average high heat temperature in July is 93 degrees Fahrenheit. So any temperature 10 degrees above that for several days would be considered high heat. It's dangerous because even temperatures of 90 degrees or above can induce serious health complications in both children and adults. Um, and that's all related to heat index, which is how our body interprets heat, both from the outside temperature as well as the relative humidity. There are several signs and symptoms to look out for as far as heat reactions go. First would be heat cramps, and that involves cramping or spasms of the calves, of the thighs, of the stomach, as well as the hands. And that's a sign that you need to back off cool down, drink plenty of fluids, and refrain from any physical activity until that cramping has gone away. Next, we can move on to heat exhaustion, which includes that sweating, the cramping, as well as some dizziness, nausea, vomiting. You might even faint or pass out. That's a sign that our bodies have had too much. We need to cool down, strip off those sticky hot clothes, and that would be a great time to call your doctor to see if they have any other advice for you. Most importantly are the signs of heat stroke, which includes that nausea, dizziness, but we really wanna look out for altered mentation, meaning that you or your child isn't quite acting like themselves and they're looking a little confused. Heat stroke is a medical emergency. You wanna make sure to call 911, again, cool the body down, a cool sponge bath until emergency services have arrived. Water, 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 I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, all heat reactions are responsive to fluid replacement, so just making sure you stay hydrated. Water is gonna be your best friend. For kids and for teens, drinking about eight ounces every 30 minutes, particularly when they're outside, is gonna be a great way to protect yourself against heat reactions. I would argue that caffeine and alcohol are things that everyone should back off on a little bit. I just wanna make sure that folks aren't drinking things in in substitute for water, so making sure that we're taking in adequate amounts of water and not taking in too many fluids that are gonna end up dehydrating us, like alcohol and caffeine. It can absolutely be safe. Um, water is a great way to cool down. We're not monsters. We wanna make sure that our kids are playing and then having fun this summer. Um, that's a good time, though, to not forget sunblock. So we wanna make sure SPF of 15 or higher 20 minutes before going outside and then reapplying at least every two hours or even more often if folks are gonna be swimming. If your air conditioning is unreliable or you don't have AC, there are several things you can do both in and out of the home to help you. In the home, things like curtains and shades to cover those windows. You can even create heat reflectors where you take tin foil over cardboard, put that in your window and it helps reflect the sun out from your home and back outside. Sac County is a great resource. They have several cooling centers that are opening up. Local malls as well as libraries will have air conditioning as well.